This is WGME-TV, Channel 13. Now, for the news of what Maine's all about. The News 13 6 o'clock report. Police officers around the state are riding around in cars some say are not safe. Good evening, I'm Jeff Barnes. And I'm Kim Block. Every department in southern Maine, except Augusta and Bath, uses some 1990 Chevy Caprices. State police alone have more than 100 of them on the street. That was the kind of car Brunswick police officer James Swint was driving when he died. Swint's chief blames the type of seatbelt in the car for Swint's fatal injuries. Tonight, we have two reports. We begin with News 13's Linda Hofstein. The Westbrook police chief says even before the fatal accident in Brunswick, he didn't like the look of the seat belts in his new cruisers. The seat and shoulder belts in the 1990 Chevy Caprices are attached to the door, not the frame. Chief Ron Alanac says some of his officers are concerned they could be thrown from the car if the door opens for some reason. They do feel very uncomfortable driving the automobiles right now. Uh, there have been a couple that have requested other vehicles. Portland police have called a Canadian engineering company to help them redesign the seatbelt system in their Chevy Caprices. They have about a dozen of them on the road and want to make them safer. And I think they're going to get back to us with some recommendations, hopefully, and something that could supplement our present system uh, because we're going to be stuck with these cars for another couple of years and we want to make sure that the seatbelt system is safe. Just about every department in southern Maine has some 1990 Chevy Caprices on the road. In Cape Elizabeth, they have three, and the chief says they've already ordered parts to improve the seatbelt system. It's our understanding at this time that the present system cannot be retrofitted so that a separate lap belt uh, will need to be installed. Many departments are looking at modifying their 90s. Others are just taking a wait-and-see attitude. But at least one department is hoping to trade in its 90s for 91. The 91 have airbags. Linda Hobstein, News 13. This is News 13's Consumer Wise reporter Nancy Canton. Police aren't the only ones concerned about these safety belts. So are consumers like Helen Garnsey of Sanford. She just bought a GM, a 1990 Century Limited, a few weeks ago. It has the same seat belts that Brunswick police officer James Swint had in his patrol car. I had been concerned that it was on the door in the same thought because I do have my grandchildren with me a good part of the time. And it just occurred to me this is kind of... It's not the greatest thing in the world having it on the door, particularly because I quite often, because of force of habit, open the door with the seat belt still on. Here's how the seat belt works. The lap and shoulder belt is one unit. It's connected to the door. You can leave it buckled, which some say makes it too cumbersome to get in and out of the car, or you can buckle it each time. Regardless of which way you choose, the Center for Auto Safety, a Washington, D.C. consumer group, says the seat belts don't work. We'd like to see General Motors warn consumers that if the door comes open during a crash or just in regular routine driving, that the belt system that's in the car right now will not hold them in. Russell Shue says that's a scary thought when you consider there are five and a half million GM cars between the years 1987 and 90 that have these kinds of seat belts and are on the road today. Shue says the federal government must force GM to recall the seat belts. Chu says there have been four deaths and five injuries involving GM cars with these seatbelts. People like Helen Garnsey hope there won't be another accident. Instead, General Motors will do something about it. Nancy Canton, News 13.